What's good, everybody? It's your boy Rio West, and we back another episode of the Dynasty Rebuild. As you can see, we got ourselves another commit. Two star this time, not one star like the last time. Kiki Olete. I mentioned him before. I think in I think it was episode one, episode two. I can't remember, but uh, he was one of the people that had us on his radar, and um, now nah, he done he done committed after we. Ended up knocking off Miami University. So, so far, so good. Us being on a little winning streak that we on right now is a good look for us. Um, 4 0, we done knocked off Miami. We got our biggest, biggest, biggest opponent yet with Florida University coming up. Again, we built a new rivalry over there with Miami University. Now, we working on uh, building another new rivalry with Florida University over here. So I'm interested to see how this one's going to turn out because uh, if we get through this one, it's a chance we might can go undefeated. So top stories. We got NC State knocked off Clemson 20 to 16. Um, Arkansas versus Texas A&M. Minnesota versus Michigan coming up this week. So some interesting matchups coming up. Let's check out our recruiting. So we had a commit, and we had some people lock us out and commit to other schools. So thankfully for us, it's been a long road, but we finally got us some more hours. So we done got us 170 hours. Um, We can go ahead and start allocating some of these hours elsewhere to some of these quarterbacks and uh, some of these other positions. Might have to look into possibly going to add some some more receivers to the board because I, I wasn't really thinking too much about that. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I need five more receivers. So check out these quarterbacks. Check out George Fine. Like I said, you know, I'm, I want to go with the scrambling quarterback. Uh, I want to take a chance on them because I know the speed is probably up there. If I can get speed and arm strength, that would be clutch. So the one thing I haven't done yet is started recruiting any of these QBs. So or scouting, so it's time to scout. And off the bat, it looks like this guy might have some decent throw power, and he's got some. He's got some good speed. Eighty-eight speed is really good, considering um, Cam Fancher's speed is eighty-two, and I'm able to get off on the ground with him, like say so. So if I, if I can get off with Cam Fancher, I could definitely get off with somebody with eighty-eight speed. And he's got us. Pretty high up there on his list. Well, not pretty high up there. We're number one, but we're pretty high. We're pretty far ahead of the other opponents. So if we can get him to commit early, that would be huge. That would be huge. We can go ahead and take him off the board because it's not looking like we're going to have a chance at that. He's got us locked out. So Jeremy Dora. Let's see. Let's see. Scout. Let's see. Short accuracy, 78. Medium accuracy, 74. The speed looked like it might be somewhat average. That ain't too bad. Again, if I'm doing work with Cam Fancher and Cam Fancher is an 82, I'm pretty sure I could do work with anybody else who's either that or above. So if they're at least in that range, and the thing about it is my backup quarterbacks on the depth chart, they, their speed is worse than Fancher's, so I don't even really think about putting them in like say so. So um, let's see what else we got. What else we looking at? It's looking like these other guys we're not really. They they don't really have us on their radar like say so. But also, when it comes one thing I have noticed when it comes to the scout, it doesn't matter how far off these people' radar you are. If you offer them a scholarship and invest any kind of time in them, they they'll jump you up. To, oh, this is a good this is a good recruit. Ninety one throw powers, seventy seven short accuracy. This this might be a good eighty six speed too. At that, this this might be a good one for us right here. So, hell, if I could pull off him and George Fine, that would be crucial. But like I was saying a second ago, one thing I've noticed and I've observed about if you're when you're recruiting is that God damn, I only got two two receivers on, on my prospect recruiting board. Yeah, this is a problem. I definitely need to go add some receivers to my list, especially if I got five at the need position. So and 
King and Hodges has had us up there, but it's looking like Miami's trying to gain some ground on us. And I'm wondering what his speed is. So acceleration is 92. His speed's got to be anywhere between 96 and 99. So we definitely need to lock him up. The only problem with that is we done used up all the hours we can on him by sending the house. So there's not much more we can do besides maybe schedule a visit. Can I even schedule a visit? How does that work? If um, his hours is 50 or 50, does that mean that I can't schedule a visit? I don't know. But we definitely need to add more receivers. to. The, oh, yeah, Miami's all, offered him a scholarship. So it's a chance he could gain a lot of ground on us. It's a chance he can gain a lot of ground on us. But like I was trying to say before I got thrown off by noticing that I have very few receivers on my prospect recruiting war as well as running backs that's another one we need to add but running back not as bad as receiver because receiver we we down five receivers after the end of the season so um but one thing i have noticed is that and i've learned this from a couple of the content creators before uh college football 25 drop is that when you have a player that has you at the top of their list and has you in front of the next opponent by a great deal, you want to go ahead and close on it. You don't want to let up. You want to go ahead and close on it while you can. So it's best to, if you haven't sent the house or if you haven't allocated a lot of hours to these individuals, you want to make sure you do everything you can possible to make sure you seal the deal on those prospects as soon as possible. For two reasons. One, because you never know how quickly the uh, the trailing school behind you in second place can gain ground. They can gain ground extremely quickly on you, especially if they're a higher profile school. So it's best to if you're ahead and you're ahead by a lot, don't take your foot off the gas. Go ahead and finish the deal. Do whatever you got to do to get them to commit as soon as possible. And two, you get those hours back. So the sooner you get them to commit, you get those hours back so you can allocate those hours towards another prospect and be able to scout and, you know, send DMs, offer scholarships, etc. So it's best to, if you have a good lead on the second place school, don't let up, go ahead and follow through, finish it off, get the job done, get them off your board. Because that's what I do. If somebody's locked me out, if somebody committed somewhere else, if somebody committed to me, then I immediately go ahead and take them off the board because I don't have to focus any resources on them any any further. So, um, yeah, so that's all we're doing right here is we're going to clear all, make some space on this board because I need to add more receivers and I need to add more running backs to my board. And start getting them scouted and start offering scholarships because right now I'm pretty empty at those positions. So I'm gonna go to my pipelines like I normally typically would. I'm go to running backs, and then once I'm done adding running backs, I'm gonna add more receivers. So let's see. And running backs, a, another thing with that, just like how I was saying with receivers and quarterbacks, just like I told y'all, I like speed. With those positions, I like speed at my running back position. So naturally, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an elusive back. But also, when I'm going about getting a back, and it's the same thing how I did with Madden all these years, is yes, I'm always going to go after the elusive backs, the quick backs, the fast backs. But I'm also going to go after a power back because... I need that thunder and lightning type of deal. I need the running back to soften up that defense to get them thinking like, oh, he's going to break out on the edge. Oh, he's going to fake this, this, and that. And then when they least expect it, that's when I'm going to come bring in the bruiser to run straight up the middle to truck the defenders, to stiff arm the defenders, to break as many tackles as possible. So it's the perfect combination. The same way NFL teams and teams in real life like to run their offenses is the same way I like to run mine. So I like to have a couple power. I mean, I like to have a couple elusive backs with one, maybe two power backs. That way I could just perfectly, you know, I might use the elusive back 
from uh, my 20 yard line to their 10 yard line. And then that's when I like to put the, the big bruising physical back in. So, or the br- big bruising physical back in on third and one or, or fourth and one or third and two or something like that. So, when I'm scouting, I'm definitely, when I'm scouting on Madden and when I'm recruiting on, in, uh, I, say, I was about to say NCAA, I'm still getting used to saying college football. And when I'm recruiting on college football 25, I'm do the same method that I used on Madden. And I'm just going to look for the bru- one bruising back and a couple of elusive backs. You know what the deal is when it comes to receiver. It's deep thread everything. But I kind of have the same concept when it comes to receiver. I'm going to go deep thread, deep thread, deep thread. And then I'm going to look for the big physical receiver. I'm a, I got to have at least one or two big physical receivers. So while I'm routing you to death with a deep threat receiver all day, when you least expect it, I'm going to throw a jump ball to my big physical receiver who's got great spectacular catching and give him a chance to win win some one-on-one balls. So it's all a method. It's all a method to the madness. You can't do too much of one thing. You got to have something to offset. And that's the way I like to run my um my offense. So it's the same thing with defense. Like, yeah, I like my speed across the defense. But I also like my physical big-hitting linebackers as well, I also like. Even though I like speed off the edge, I don't. I'm not really a big fan of speed in the middle. So I like my defensive tackles to be big, slow but strong, um, pursuit heavy defensive tackles that can get in there and stop the run. They don't need to rush the passer as long as they can create some chaos in the middle. And I got my edge rushers, my speedsters on the edge. I'm in good shape. So. You start dishing out some of these uh, these scholarships to these newly added recruits to my board. Vasquez, Kyrie Montgomery. This, so this looks like this would be a fairly easy one to get to jump off the board quick. Don't have to do anything immediately as far as action-wise, uh, even though it would help. But offer a scholarship, I'm already in seventh place. The other teams aren't too far ahead of me. So I could go ahead and send an action, like DM him. But after about a week, I should be in good shape. So Paul KZ. This one looks like it could be a long shot because everybody is so far ahead, but it don't hurt to offer him a scholarship. Um, DM him and, you know, all that, all that extra stuff. But see, these other players like Ellington and who is this? Cedric Poole, who don't have too many teams really like too far ahead that's a go now granted he's a one star ellington is a two star but you get the drift if it's not many teams up there nobody's offered a scholarship you're in pretty decent shape so at least from what i've observed so far through trial and error through the first few weeks of the season and this this rebuild so like, even with this guy, even though it, it, he's close to a green, Gordon Cooks is close to a green uh, on somebody near the top, we're not too far behind them, and nobody's offering him a scholarship. So all we have to do is get in here, offer a scholarship, and play the game for the week, and then see where that goes, especially if we can pull off a win. I think that's what's helped us thus far is the fact that he, some of these teams have had us pretty far down the list, but because we've been winning, we've been in good shape. So I need to see what these this Heisman watch look like because J G J three got to be up there. He got to be up there. So you mean to tell me he's not up there yet? Like everything I've been doing, I guess I got to go extra hard with George Johnson in order to get him on his Heisman list. Don't tell me they're making it extremely difficult to get the Heisman trophy. It's cool. We just gonna go extra, extra hard. I'm gonna have, when I get the chance, I'm gonna have to check out the, the the records and see what they're at. But I mean, it's game time, y'all. Y'all know what the deal is. This is what we are here for. We had a new rivalry develop last week with Miami University, in-state rival. Now we have another in-state rival, the Florida Gators. The biggest test of the season so far. The first SEC team 
that I'm squaring off against, you know? And uh, I'm probably going to end up having to go with the blue unis. That, that cross with the orange helmet is a little much. So I might have to do my dark, my navy blue unis and get them with their orange pants or their orange helmet. Let me see what they alternate away options look like. That might be the go. Um, oh, no, never mind. That, that, that white out. I like the white out. So we'll take the navy blue versus the white out. Y'all know the deal. You play good. Well, you look good. You play good. You play good. They pay good. You get me? So it is what it is. We about to jump this thing on. Owls up. Gators down. Let's get it popping. Let's see if we can go 5-0. and oh. The stadium still ain't packed out, but I promise you. I don't know how the dynamic attendance thing works. If it's a through the year type of thing or if it's through the years type of thing. But if it's through the year type of thing, we keep up what we're doing right now. Come the end of the season, we're going to be in good shape. So, Coach Blackman, we get the ball to start the game. Unfortunately, I normally like to kick. But Cam Fancher, as you can see, stats ain't really the best at all. 840 yards, four TDs, four picks. But JG3, yes, sir. He's the utility back. He's the he's the do it all. He gets it done for us. And you know what it is. You know I gotta go to my go to my my speed option play. Ah. Yes, sir. GJ three doing work. Let's dump it dump it off for the screen out the backfield. Yes, sir. My utility back. I'm telling you before it's said and done, we are gonna get this man in the Heisman race. Why would I throw it right to him? See, I'm 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 notorious for this. I start to crumble under that pressure like that, and I just be trying to get it off, and I make stupid plays like that. Sat pick six for the touchdown. What a way to start the game. Come on, we got to come down and capitalize. There we go. No. Hold on to the ball. What are we doing? Thank you. Thank you. Come on, keep it going. Yes, sir. My guy got some dog in him. Prime Dez Bryant right there. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on, Mobley. Running game guru. College football, 25, Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan. Yes, sir, we get it done. Running back system, immaculate. We'll take it. No, you're not, you're not winning no eyes in no time soon. Possibly next season if you get your chance to start, but this GJ3 year for that. So that was big. That was big to get on the board, tie up the score. Now we can settle down a little bit. We just got to lock up. Come on, lock up. And nobody's out there. And he's just running through us like it ain't nothing. That's fantastic. Come on, get it. Same 17. What are we doing? We just letting 17 do work out here. Stop him. All right. Come on. We need another stop. We need another stop. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. They ain't as tough as they think. They ain't as tough as they think. We got this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all in for a rude awakening. This ain't your, this ain't your, your, your granddaddy, Florida Atlantic House. We, we doing some work here. We turning the culture around. We 4-0, baby. We done knocked off Miami. We done knocked off Michigan State. Drop 71 on Florida International. Don't play with us. We here. We'll send y'all home with the, duh, with the, with the L. Come on, Mobley. Get it popping. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Show them who run Florida. Yes, sir. I can't wait to add Florida State to my schedule next season. Come on, cross middle. Ha! Come on. All right. You got to catch that. All right, we need another stop. They stopped us. We need another stop. What is this? What is this? Oh, my God. The pursuit angles are complete garbage. Ay, ay, ay. We had all the momentum going our way and couldn't capitalize. Now they done capitalize. 14-7. We got to come down. We got to punch it in before half, even the score. Good out, good out. Bust out with that speed option. Okay, we got the first down. That's all that matters. Okay, yes, sir. Cross the middle. You know, bruh, get real. That's typical EA right there. That is typical EA. If it ain't mad, now it's CFB. Come on now. Man, go sit down. We about to send y'all home. Humble yourself. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Punt that ball back. Punt it back. 
Now we still got a little time to drive. Come on, let's get it downfield. We still got two timeouts. Go get that. God damn it. All right. Come on, lock up. Lock up. Well, there goes us get, having a chance to get any points before I have. Stop them. Thank you. Well, I, I'm going to take holding them to a field goal. I'm going to take holding them. Because it could have been worse the way this game been going so far. So 17 nothing at halftime. I'm going to take it. I don't want to take it. We've put ourselves in a bad position. The pick six, then that fumble, then not scoring just before half and them getting it. And it's fairly even, even though we got the edge. But another game where we got the edge and we're down at half, we ain't have nothing to show for it. So hopefully we can come out and turn that around in the second half. All right. come. Y'all not about to let this man get off. Come on, man. Y'all doing the most right now. We can't go out like this. Come on, now. lock up, lock up, lock. Nuh uh, nuh uh, no. Come on. Seriously. Twenty four seven. We going out like some suck. Another pick six. Cam Fancher, you said son of a. Thirty one seven. Talk about being humble. We thought we was doing. Oh my God! Another pick. Man, get this man out the game, bro. Get Cam Fancher out the game. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. At least the defense got to stop. Ooh. 34 to 7. Sad self. This is terrible. I knew we'd eventually lose, but golly, like this? This is a sad sight. Oh, my God. Fourth and three. We can't even. So, yeah, pull Fancher up out there. Let's see what the backup got. We just going to run it up. We just going to do whatever we can. We're going to go to the go-to plays to try to punch in, get another score, and make the score look somewhat feasible or somewhat decent, should I say, because this is just atrocious. Come on, Alexander. Get me to the promise line so it don't look so sad. It's still going to look sad. Even if you if you watch this whole clip, you're going to know. So at least, at least we get the pad GJ3 stat some and get him in the running for Heisman. Even better. At least we could go home with that. No, you ain't putting nobody to sleep. Go sit down somewhere. It's tragic. Tragic game. So, a little bit of humble pie. We was feeling ourselves a little bit too much there. Starting off 4-0, and knocking off Michigan State and Miami. And we let uh, Florida come in here and punch us in the mouth. Running back, 11 carries, 130 yards for Montreal Johnson Jr. and a touchdown. They came in here and did work on us. We had Mertz out here looking like prime T-Boy at, at Florida. So th this was this was an ugly game. This was an ugly game. Look, I, I don't even really want to come look at these stats, but I'm going to do it anyways. Fancher, 77.4 rating, 16 for 27, 130 yards, 59%, zero touchdowns, three interceptions. You suck. All right. So GJ3, nine carries, 110 yards, no touchdowns. Mobley, eight carries, 90 yards. So at least my running game stuck to the script. Now y'all see why I lean so heavily on my run game. I can't depend on my pass game. And it finally came back to, to bite me in the behind. Previous games, I haven't had to deal with that. I haven't had to worry about that. But this game, it came back to get me. And we're going to have to get back to the drawing board, reassess ourselves. We thought we was hot stuff. They came and humbled us. It's cool. I could take that L. We still form one. And if we run a table, we'd be in good position to win the conference and uh, possibly make the college football playoff. So I appreciate you all for tuning in. We're about to cut it right there. If you haven't done so and you're watching this right now, hit that like and subscribe button as well as that notification tab so you can stay up to speed on everything EA Sports College Football 25. But till next time.